Well, good morning. I welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. How is it with your souls today? I'm glad to hear that. Well and dry, right? <laughs> For now. <laughs> As we, before we begin our worship, uh, just some announcements. The uh, you can still sign up for the church-wide Lenten study. Again, we're studying Simon Peter, the flawed but faithful disciple by Adam Hamilton. And if you would like to sign up, you can do so at the connections tables. That'll be starting somewhere in the week of February 18th. Uh, good and plenty meal uh, coming up on February 7th. Big turkey meal with all the fixins again. And uh, if you can help debone those and, and pick the turkeys, please contact Lana or Kathy for that. Uh, the change for change, those cups that you keep your coins in, uh, they are due to be brought in next week, next Sunday. So you can bring them in. You can line them up here on the altar rail. Um, and just another reminder that the youth will be holding a soup sale with the proceeds going to fight hunger. And next week, next Sunday, is the deadline to order the soup as well. Also, on the altar this morning is a, a rose, and that is uh, to celebrate uh, Candy Winter's new grandson, Jack. So if you see Candy, Candy uh, you know, give her a hug and tell her you're glad uh, to, to hear about this new life in their lives. Now, my friends, let us begin worship in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Good morning, church. Good morning. Will you please stand as we join our voices in the choral call to worship?
And now let us join our voices in our opening hymn for the day, number 96, Praise the Lord Who Reigns Above. may be seated. And will you please join me in the prayer of the day? O Lord, who makes all things new, speak to us today. May your truth touch not only our intellect, but also the deepest yearnings of our hearts. We bring our concerns, our questions, and yes, even our sins. Lord, forgive us and purify us that our hearts may be filled with your love and our minds with your wisdom. Amen. And now, let us continue our prayers, our supplications, our praises, our deepest thoughts that we may share with our Heavenly Father in the silence of our hearts. Amen. Heavenly Father, we are blessed this day as every day by your presence with us. You're leading us to do your work, to be your people, to serve your world, to be in fellowship with all around us, to be good stewards of what we have been given to be responsible for in this day and all days. We are so blessed. May we acknowledge the blessings that we have from our Heavenly Father. May we share those blessings. May we share the good news with all we encounter in our lives. The greatest blessing of all 
Heavenly Father, is that we are indeed redeemed through your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now we have the privilege and the honor to present a portion of what we've been blessed with in our lives. In the service to our fellow man, to the church, to the furtherance of God's kingdom here on earth and in the, and in the world to come. Not just our monetary gifts, but also our prayers, our talents, our abilities, our good deeds, our being in service to others around us. Let us now give our tithes.
Let us pray. Gracious God, I dedicate these gifts to your kingdom work and my life to you as a living sacrifice, bringing all my actions under the atoning blood of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, come and fill your temple. Amen. You may be seated. And please join, join me in our prayer hymn, Through It All. this life, you have blessed us with so many things, and we give you thanks this day. Lord, there are times in this life when we smile and we laugh out loud. Lord, there are times when we dance and times when we see someone and we just throw our arms around them. Lord, there are times when we throw our hands in the air and we praise you and sing hallelujah. And Lord, there are those times that we just we just sit back and we relax because all things are good. But there are also times in our lives, Lord, when it is hard to throw our hands in the air and, and shout praises. It is, there are times when the tears that roll down our cheeks aren't out of joy and happiness, but out of grief and sorrow. Lord, there are times when we feel anxious and, Lord, when we're in pain. But we give you thanks for in those times, you have said that you will never leave us or forsake us and that you are with us through it all, through it all. And Lord, when we, when we put our trust in you, when, when we turn to you in our time of need and you, you respond, that strengthens our faith. It gives us confidence that, that you hear us and that you are always with us. And our faith is strengthened and we, we trust in you. Lord, we trust in your promises that we read in scripture and in your word. And so today, Lord, we give you thanks for the times that we can throw our hands in the air, times when we laugh and sing. And we are grateful that when we struggle to do those things, when life gets hard, that you see us through it all, through it all. And now, Lord, we pray for your church. Ask that you continue to bless us and help us to find creative ways to, to share this good news with those around us. And Lord, we pray that you will be with those who are in need of you, those who are in need of healing, Lord, we pray for uh, Morgan and Boggs de Guzman, Danny X daughter and her husband and their new, new child, Levi, who was born so, so early. We pray that you would strengthen him and strengthen those lungs. And 
Lord, may they be blessed to have many years to celebrate and throw their arms around Levi and, and cry tears of joy. Lord, we pray that you would be with all this day who are in need of your guidance. Lord, there are some who are doubting right now and they, they're wondering, is there really a God? Lord, we pray that you would you would reveal yourself to them that in this season of epiphany that they would have that aha moment and they would come to faith. Lord, bless us, each one of us this day with a, a renewal of our own faith that it may be stronger that as we move through this life, you go with us through it all. Amen.
you choir, Tom and Lucy. And now will you please join me in the prayer of illumination. Almighty God, by your spirit illuminate the sacred pages that our minds may be open to receive your word, our hearts taught to love your word, and our wills strengthened to obey your word. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. And a reading from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David. And he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. From the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teachings, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons as he and he would not let the demons speak because they knew him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Today's sermon is about an ark. No, it's not. But there's a lot, a lot of folks not here today. They couldn't make it. And I thought maybe we missed it. Maybe we missed the ark. I don't think so. No, but today is we, we continue to observe the season of Epiphany. And the lectionary during the season of Epiphany continues to point out to us those aha moments, those, it continues to teach us about the divine human nature of our Lord and Savior. And so today we will hear some more of that. When I was a teenager, I was in the Boy Scouts, and the Boy Scouts had a program. I, I think it was called Career Days. I'm not sure, I don't really rightly remember, it was so long ago, but on that day, about 50 of us gathered together in the Belfont Courthouse, and we, we listened to the judge talk to us for a while, and then we uh, saw a short mock trial, 
And then we were paired up with local businessmen, and we spent the day shadowing them to, to learn what they do for a living. I got paired up with a, a young DJ named Bill Dan, who worked for WBLF radio station in Belfont. And it was a cool day. I mean, I got to pick and play music on the radio. I got to do an on-air advertisement, and I was interviewed on-air. So a lot of fun. I don't know if the scouts do that anymore, but there is a take your child to work day, like take a son or take a daughter, and that's where the kids get to follow mom and dad to see what they do all day, right? Fun stuff. Well, the disciples, we are told, spent three years following Jesus. They walked with him. They talked with him. They learned from him. They ate with him. And, you know, we read, when we read the gospel accounts, it's like, It'll say, one day Jesus was doing this, or he did this, and then it'll say, on another day. And it's like we bing bang around the days. But did you ever wonder what Jesus and the disciples did all day long? Not just what they did here or there, but what was a day in the life of Jesus like? There's an old joke that we clergy only work one day a week, all right? Is that what they thought about Jesus, that he only worked one day of the week? Have you ever wondered what it would have been like to follow him around for a day? Well, we don't have to wonder because Mark wrote in his gospel, as he wrote it, he gave us a record of a day in the life of Jesus right here in the beginning in chapter 1. And in Mark 1, verses 16 to 20, he tells us that, One day, see there that is, one day this happened. One day Jesus was walking along the Sea of Galilee and he saw Peter and Andrew net fishing from the shore and he said, come follow me. He invited them to to be part of his ministry and they did. And then a little farther up the shore, he ran into James and John and he invited them to come as well and they joined him. And then Mark says that Jesus and these four disciples walked to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, they went to the synagogue. Now, I just want to uh, further set the stage here. We know that Jesus called his first disciples and walked to Capernaum on a Friday because when the sun would hit the horizon... On Friday evening, the leader of the synagogue, the Hazan, would blow the shofar or the ram's horn and announce that the Sabbath had begun. And when people heard the, the, the shofar being blown, the families would then gather in their homes at twilight to eat the Sabbath meal. The next morning, they would get up and the male community would gather at the synagogue. They would recite the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And then someone would read from the scrolls of the Torah, followed by a sermon based on the, the, the scripture reading. And any male was permitted to share a sermon. However, if there happened to be a visiting rabbi, a visiting teacher, they would be asked to, to, to preach that day. And this is where we find Jesus. So our day in the life of Jesus begins on a Sabbath Saturday morning in the synagogue. It is here that Jesus begins to showcase his authority. When when he was 12 years old, he amazed the, the teachers with his answers and his understanding of scripture. And on this day, he was going to do it again. We also know from Luke that it was Jesus' habit to go to synagogue. So if he was in a town and there was a place to go, you knew Jesus was going to be there. So he and his disciples are present in the synagogue this day. Now, as I said, the responsibility of teaching or bringing the message was shared by the men of the synagogue who were versed in the scriptures. And a visiting rabbi, like Jesus was, would be asked to speak. And it didn't take long for those sitting there listening to him to know that there was something special about Jesus. They said he didn't teach as their rabbis and their scribes did. Rather, he taught them as one who had authority. So let us just pause for a moment and ask the question, what does it mean to teach as one who had authority? Well, a rabbi was someone who was schooled in the scriptures and accepted as someone 
whose teachings could be trusted. Rabbis also had disciples or students who would follow them. And so Jesus is viewed as a rabbi. And what, but what made Jesus different wasn't necessarily what he taught, but how he taught it. In order to give credence to their teachings, rabbis would quote a previous or famous rabbi. So they might say, according to Rabbi Halil, so such and such happened, or this is what it means. But Jesus didn't do that. Unlike other rabbis, Jesus taught with personal authority. And so we hear Jesus say things like, you have heard it said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I say to you, I say to you, love your enemy and praise for those who persecute you. His authority wasn't founded on the teachings of other rabbis. His truth and wisdom came from the Holy Spirit. He is the Son of God, and his authority comes from God. I remember when I was at Penn State, um, we were given instructions for a landscaping project, but we had some questions about what the professor meant, you know, what were the real intentions. And one of my friends says, well, I think he wants us to do this. But a couple others said, no, I, I, I think he wants us to do it this way. Fortunately, the professor came into studio, and we were able to ask him what he truly meant. And after he explained it, that was it. Nobody could interpret the instructions in any other way. Well, the same is true of Jesus. Jesus was God in human flesh. He was the author of the law, and he didn't need to cite anyone else's understanding of the laws and traditions. He was his own authority, and the people were amazed at what he taught and how he taught it. But not everyone. Not everyone was enthralled with Jesus. The religious leaders, they found him to be offensive and blasphemous. They often challenged his teachings and tried to discredit his word, and they they opposed and rejected his call to repentance. You can easily challenge somebody's authority with your own interpretation of their teaching. But their actions, that, that's a little harder. For actions speak louder than words, right? Which Jesus was about to demonstrate. While Jesus is teaching, a, a demon-possessed man stood up and interrupted him and, and started yelling, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy Son of God. few interesting things about what the demon just said. First, the demon names Jesus. He says, I know who you are, Jesus of Nazareth. It was believed in that day that if you could name a spirit, then you could control it. And so it's thought that the demon tries to name Jesus first so that he might be able to control him, which he could not. Second, it shows that the demon knew Jesus' true identity. The people sitting there and even his new disciples knew Jesus was a carpenter. They knew he was a good teacher. But this demon knew he was the Holy One of God, God in flesh. Third, it's clear that the demon is afraid of Jesus. What do you want with us? Have you come to destroy us? This demon, like all demons, knew Who has the true authority over the world? And it's not Satan. This demon knows that Jesus could destroy him with a snap of his finger. So Jesus is teaching on the Sabbath morning, and the demon-possessed man stands up and he yells, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? And Jesus turns, and he sternly rebukes him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. And immediately the demon violently shook the man and ran off shrieking. Notice the demon didn't try to resist because it couldn't. It knew Jesus, who Jesus truly was. It had to obey. It wasn't happy about it. That's why he shook the man. But it had no choice. It had to obey the Holy One of God and leave. Now, as I said earlier, the people were amazed with Jesus' teaching because he taught with authority, but now they are in awe. This, was, this wasn't just words, but this was an awesome display of authority over the spiritual realm and evil. They said he even gives orders to the evil spirits, and they obey him. Then, having heard his teaching, 
having seen and witnessing his display of power, they recognized his authority and began to share um, what they had heard and witnessed to everyone they encountered. And the word spread, not just through Capernaum, but through the whole region of Galilee. Friends, this is just the beginning of Jesus' day. After church, Jesus and the disciples went to Simon Peter's mother-in-law's house. And we're told that she was sick and she had a fever. When Jesus heard of this, he went to her. He took her by the hand and helped her stood, stand up. And the fever immediately went away and she was healed. So much so that she was able to make lunch. So not only did Jesus show he had authority over the scripture, not only did he show he had authority over the evil spirits, now he's showing that he has authority over sickness. Now, we don't know what Jesus did in the afternoon. We're not told. However, because it is the Sabbath, we can assume they just rest. They rested. They, they sat around. They enjoyed each other's company. They sang songs, played games, told stories, ate and drank food and drank some wine. They just relaxed, which is what the Sabbath is for. For us to take a break from our daily grind and just enjoy one another, to enjoy God and each other's presence. But when evening came and the Sabbath was over, people began to show up at the door with their sick. And Mark tells us Jesus healed many who were sick and he cast out many more demons. This was a day in the life of Jesus. Now, my day at the radio station with the DJ, that was a lot of fun, but this Man, this would have been phenomenal. We too would have been amazed like they were. So what are we to take from this? Well, I suggest three things. First, as Christians, we need to recognize and acknowledge Jesus' authority. His, his authority over Scripture. So when we, when we read the Gospels and we hear about his teachings and we read his parables and the things that he's trying to get us to understand, we need to follow those things. Not try to reinterpret it for our own desired narrative. Not try to twist it so that it makes sense to us. No, we need to follow Jesus' authority. He is the writer of these things. We need to acknowledge his authority over all creation. We need to acknowledge his authority over the spiritual world. And we need to acknowledge his authority over our lives. Which leads to the second thing for us to take away today. Once we recognize Jesus' authority, we have to submit to it. The religious leaders, they acknowledged Jesus' understanding and mastery of the scriptures. They were even amazed by his miracles, but they refused to accept and submit to his authority. And why? There are many reasons, I'm sure, but partially because they had developed traditions. They had made up certain rituals and rules that the people needed to follow from their own understanding of, of what they knew of scripture. And they, but they had elevated their rules and their traditions to an equal level to Scripture. The rules and their, their governance of the rules and traditions assured them power. Thus, they saw Jesus as a threat to their status, their power, and their authority. And so they opposed him instead of submitting to him. Again, once we acknowledge Jesus' authority, we need to submit to it. And the third lesson for us is we need to share Jesus with everyone we meet. The people had heard Jesus speak. They saw him perform these miracles, and they couldn't keep it to themselves. As Mark said, they were amazed at what they heard and witnessed, and so they spread the word. The men went home from the synagogue that day, and they told their wives and their children and everyone in their household, and then they told their neighbors and then the, as the women that evening went to get bread, they told the baker. And when they went to the well to, to, to get water, they talked about what, what they had heard and what they had witnessed. And, and then the old men were at the city gates and they were telling the stories and they would, they would continue to, 
speak of Jesus as they walked from town to town and they told stories of demons being exercised and fleeing in the name of Christ as they sailed across the Sea of Galilee. And parents would tell their children these stories as they went to sleep that night. The news was just too good and amazing to keep to themselves. And the same should be true of us today. Even though we can't follow Jesus around, we, we can read about it in the Gospels. And, and if we trust that that record is true, if we believe it, then, then the stories are just as amazing to us today as they were back then. For it, and, and so we need to spread this news, for it is through our testimony that others will hear about these amazing things and, and come to accept Jesus' authority and put their faith in him and be saved. And so this day, what we want to understand is we need to accept and acknowledge Jesus' authority, we need to submit to it, and then we need to spread the word. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this record of a day in the life of Jesus. Lord, help us to recognize your authority. Help us to submit to it. And Lord, help us to tell the tales. Not just the tales of what you have done in the past in these stories, but Lord, what you have done in our own lives. You have done amazing things in our lives And we need to give testimony to that, that others may be amazed and come to faith. Amen. One of the greatest displays of, you know, today we're talking about Jesus' authority, his his ability to teach with authority, his authority over the creation, you know, the natural world, his his authority over the spiritual world. But one of the greatest um, acknowledgments or or testimonies of Jesus' authority was when he laid down his life and took it up again. In John 10, 17 to 18, the reason my father loves me, Jesus said, is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the authority to lay it down, and I have the authority to take it up again. My friends, I invite you to stand and join us as we sing our closing hymn that testifies to Jesus' authority to lay his life down and take it up again in Christ alone. Light of the world by darkness slain, 
my friends, as you go forth, go forth with the love of God. Go forth with the authority of God and spread the good news and lovingly serve one another. Amen.